Hi, it's Marco from Moose Marketing and PR, the editor of Punchline Magazine, and welcome to Punchline Talks, the business breakfast briefers, where each week I invite a panel of experts to reveal the morning newspapers, find out what's going on in their own individual businesses and their own individual business sectors, and finally, what's caught their eye in this week's Punchline. If you like the show, please like, subscribe, and share, and let's introduce you to the panel. Today, we've got Jeff Birch, Business author, keynote speaker, TV presenter, retail guru. He's written six books in print and he's a jolly nice guy. And I've got his book here as well. Thank you. Yep. What a plug. There's one sale for this. The year. checks in the post. Thank you. We've got <laughs> Tim Watkins, managing partner at Randall and Payne Accountants, recently took over Little and Co. They've got 60 staff. Very nice chap indeed. Very nice to see you today, Tim. We've got George Tatham Losh, MD and owner of Move Sales and Lettings. We've got offices in Cheltenham and Gloucester. And finally, and not least, we've got Julie Kent, MBE, Vice Chair of Pied Piper Appeal, trustee for Gloucester Beyond Goals, and now a radio presenter in her own right for 7FM with her show. What's it called, Julie? Julie's Jukebox. Julie's Jukebox. And I was a guest already. So there we go. Let me uh, just quickly run through the headings of the newspapers. I'm going to quickly share my screen, get over to here. Just like to thank the BBC for their technology. So here we go. Let's run through the papers. We've got the Daily Mirror, lowest of the low. This is obviously this story where the uh, MP was a, um, well, he was offered a chance of a school. And if he didn't have a school, it would be turned down. If he didn't vote for Johnson's way, that's the, ac the accusation. Tory rebels retaliate in row over blackmail. The Guardian, Tories using dirty tricks to get MPs back. Johnson, the I, Tory civil war over future of Johnson. The Daily Star, foul. I love it. It's the old duck and, and chicken thing that the Sun used to do. We, we hire world-class, fancy dressed costume and send out the lame duck correspondent. Love it. The Metro. <coughs> Blackmail to back Boris, the Daily Mail, uh, unions at war with PM over back to office, the Daily Telegraph, schools defy MP over masks in class, and the only one who seems to be doing the party line is the Daily Express, cash help for millions in emergency bills crisis, and finally, the Financial Times, it's all about Russia and Ukraine, and uh, something to really get our teeth in today as well, maybe. Right, okay, let's start off with uh, Jeff. What have you picked out from today's stories, please? Well, apart from our beloved Prime Minister, who's in all sorts of trouble again. <laughs> the thing with it, I, I, I think the thing, there's a, a, this is my theory on landmines, that, that, that um, Landmines are designed not to kill, they're designed to maim. The idea is then you've got to try and carry somebody with a foot missing for, for days and it slows the whole platoon down. And I think if I was the Labour opposition, I wouldn't push too hard for him re to resign. I think they've got to carry him with a missing foot now until the next election. I think to push too hard, you might have somebody intelligent. I mean, his, 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 his defence is... I am too stupid. He's got to prove he's stupid. He's either got to prove he's a sort of conniving, lying sort of person, or he's got to prove his defence is, no, I'm not. I'm stupid. <laughs> Absolutely marvellous. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I think the thing, I, I, I'll leave that now. I think the thing is that um, uh, uh, from my own point of view, I, I've, been, I've been investing my enormous millions in, in, in fantastic online technology with these super cameras and stuff, because I, I've, I realized it's a virtual world. And now I realize that everybody's going back to live work and then the whole thing's so I've been the lot. And, and I noticed the government has invested a hundred and something million in a battery factory. Uh, I mean, that's assuming that we, the technology isn't gonna move on and that we still kind of want sort of 4,000 Duracells in our cars. I know what will happen. They'll sort of spend three years building this factory and somebody will invent this thing where you use a teaspoon full of water and it propels the car for a thousand miles. You know, I'm not, not sure that we've got the technology ready yet to open a mega factory for batteries that we might not need. I, I totally agree. You can see the hydrogen stuff coming yeah. 
quickly behind it all, can't you? Um, yeah, it's it's VHS and Beta again, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. not many people might remember that. Yeah, great. The government investing 120 million in a gramophone factory. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. Thanks very much for that, Jeff. OK, let's go over to you, Tim. What have you picked out today? Uh, it's, it's a slightly similar vein. It's, it's the return to work. And um, I think you know, it would, it would be nice to have had a little bit more warning that uh, we were all going to be allowed back in the office rather than uh, an announcement late afternoon in um, Operation Save Boris's Skin. Um, <clears throat> and then just to, to the comment, everybody can go back to work tomorrow and, and, and ask your employer. Well, that's great, but it doesn't give anybody much time to react. But well, I was um, going to say, you've got your guys all working from home and in the office, isn't it? It's all shared stuff. Yeah, well, we, we all went back to home working bar, a very small handful, back in uh, December when they uh, changed the, the guidance. And, and we're going to stay doing that for the time being. So it, uh, the level of um, infection is still pretty high, I think, then uh, given where we are with tax return deadlines and all the rest of it. It just doesn't seem worth opening the doors to everybody saying, welcome back and bringing in two or three people with it and knocking everybody out. So yeah, I, I, I just struggle to understand the logic of it sometimes. Um, but you know, okay, it's a positive. Let's get back to work. Let's uh, get people in slowly. But um, looking at the, the Guardian, um, they're sort of indicating that numbers are, are creeping back up but I think what was encouraging was um, in the hospitality sector where they're saying that people that cancelled Christmas parties are, are starting to, to rebook and um, have them you know over the next couple of months perhaps and uh, that should be a, a welcome boost to that sector. Are they, are they rebooking their Christmas parties that they didn't have they're going to have them later on in February then? That's, that's what it sounds like yeah February March time and um yeah, it's good right. news. Good that news. Is, that is fantastic news. Yeah, if it's all coming back to him. Yeah. Is there anything else that you picked out as the last thing, very quickly? Uh, that was the thing that, that stood out to me. Um, I expect other people might mention Ukraine and Russia and so forth, as you, you commented on earlier on. I think that's one of the big stories. Well, well it's, a, it's, a, it's a worry, isn't it? You know, uh, we all, the, the, the papers and the media just seems to be focusing focusing on uh, on you know Boris's spats and what an idiot he is let's be honest and then we've got this massive army that could trigger world war three yeah on mm. in Europe and it seems to be totally ignored apart from the financial times George, it's like that it... thing don't look up have you seen that I recommend <laughs> it it's a wonderful film that that absolutely <laughs> fantastic absolutely fantastic yeah I totally agree um <laughs> George, let's uh, thank you ever so much for joining the show. Great to get you on at long last. Um, what have you picked out for us, please, sir? So I've, I, I delved a bit further into the newspaper because I thought, I thought I'd be somewhere further down in the packing order this morning. <laughs> so um, luckily I was right. So I've gone for um, a scientist about to crack the secret of living to 130. Um, so this is um, obviously a dig at Benzo, who's just recently invested in a, in a company who are working on... Um, uh, working on a process of uh, studying uh, into stress levels and how that affects um, our DNA and the reproduction of said DNA and how that can, you know, if they can work out how to, uh, how to, how to resolve that problem, then it would actually potentially give us 50 years of extra good health to our lives. Um, so obviously Jeff Benzo is being bashed, bashed on this because he's investing heavily in it because he, he made a quote about the fact that, um, He's now spending a lot of his time working out how he can. Uh, he, he was quoted about uh, starving off death is what he's trying to do now. So he's investing in companies that will help him live forever. Um, and obviously, the article is is saying, well, do we want people like him living forever and how it's affecting the rest of the world and monopolizing the country and well, monopolizing the world? Um, you know, this is going to happen at some some stage. You know, technology is advancing at a, at a very fast rate, and um, this will happen. So someone's going to put money into uh, to drive these things forward. And you know, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I mean, ask ask yourselves the question: Would well, you like to live for an extra fifty years? Maybe not. But would I like to live a healthy life? Is the answer to that is yes. And, you know, and with this sort of research comes, um, you know curing cancer, curing lots of diseases, curing lots of, um, you know, mental health problems, degenerate problems and all, all that sort of stuff. So 
very interesting article, I thought, hidden away in the newspaper. You could think, he's got all that money. Why could, uh, you know, he's sending rockets up, you know, he wants to even leave the planet or he wants to live forever. What mm. I don't understand, he's got all this money. Why couldn't he, why couldn't he in, in cure some malaria or, or, or do something, you know, helps the starving people in Africa or he could do so much good in the world, but it always seems to go back to him. It's um, interesting. It's interesting that it's stress. Uh, if I if I don't cut down on my stress, I don't think I'm going to make my thirtieth birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I, I, stress is a thing. You know, obviously, this is what happens first, isn't it? When you when you're stressed and, and busy. And yeah. uh, <laughs> if you're only twenty one, aren't you, George? Yeah. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. No. So I just thought I thought an interesting one, and um, you know, I suppose the question is. I'm sure there is a cure for many things out there, but you know, yeah. you know these these well, wealthy individuals are ruling the world. You know, if, the, if the body a has a has a built-in self-destruct. It unrewind. If it if it didn't, you would live forever. You'd just be like a tree. You just keep replacing. There's a bit where it all unzips. It's so that the clock goes off at forty-five, and it just starts not repairing bits. But like many of these films, um, you know, your brain could live on. And I think you you know, it's scary when you think of the films I was watching when when I was growing up. Um, some of that's become a reality these days and yeah. uh, you know I was talking about iRobot the other day and it's uh, you know it's just interesting how things are changing. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt no absolutely fascinating. Right Julie let's uh, let's get you on the show. Uh, Julie what have you picked out for us today please? Um, I've picked out a couple I've bought a couple of papers I live next door to a shop which is really handy but um, the first one was the pubs and restaurants calling for um, the rates the VAT rates to you know, stay at the low rate and actually even asking for it to go down to 5%, sort of leading on from what you said, Tim, you know, um, they had all these bookings, didn't they, at Christmas and New Year, and then people just cancelled, cancelled. Um, and they are saying, you know, even though things are opening up, people are still nervous and they want, you know, they don't want VAT to go back to uh, 20% in April. They want it to stay at least at 12.5 or go down to 5%. And I'm a big fan of eating out. I like to eat out at least three times a week. So I do not want my favourite restaurants. Not a cheap um, date then. No, I'm definitely not. A <laughs> actually, I don't drink, Jeff. So actually... <laughs> I am quite a cheap date, you know. You don't get a big um, alcohol bill on on my um, date. But well, um, you, you're always in the ivy, or, or I, or I do like to go to the bloody ivy. hell. Or the daffodil. Simpsons fish and chip shops, my limit. I tell you, <laughs> the daffodil's my other favourite, but um, and a whole host of coffee shops. But that was the first thing. So please, and we've actually got nearly four million people working hospitality. Oh no, 2.3, actually I looked, at, I looked it up this morning. 2.3 work in hospitality, nearly 4 million work in transport. So, you know, oh, transport is really struggling as well, isn't it? But my other story, which I'm sure you're going to be glad to hear is, did we miss our cauliflowers at Christmas? Because they weren't ready to be picked and we're going to have this influx of cauliflowers in the next month and they're all going to be really cheap. So if you're a fan of cauliflower cheese, now's the time. Cauliflowers that missed Christmas are now ready for sale. And there's, look at this, a picture of a cauliflower farm on here. So look at all those Have you got shares, Julie? <laughs> Pardon? Have you got shares in cauliflower farms? Is that um, No, I don't actually. You know where I put all my shares, George. We've talked about property <laughs> recently. Um, so... Um, yeah, so I, I just thought I couldn't resist the cauliflower story. I'm a big fan of that cauliflower rice. I don't know if you've ever had that. I absolutely oh, love that. Oh, yes. Good if you're on a diet, isn't it? Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. My secret is out. Right, well, let's go. I'm a bit deaf. I thought you said cauliflower rights. I was going rice. to say, well, yeah, I've heard of Black Lives Matter, but what's the <laughs> poor bloody cauliflower? Give <laughs> <laughs> me cauliflower rights. You never know nowadays. Everyone's got some sort of <laughs> Well, let's, Jeff, let's go over to you then, sir. Uh, Jeff, obviously, you're a keynote speaker. You used to tour around the world, um, you know, making speeches to, to the great and the good and, and presenting there. What's it like uh, now? Are, are you starting to see, you know, the opening yeah. up for you? Green shoots. Green shoots. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had we, we had a sort of pale yellow shoot before Christmas where some bits of some more courageous people went ahead with their conferences and then at the last minute cancelled because the venues were saying well you're going to have to sit in masks for six hours you know that they, they didn't want you know the thing but no I, I think people are people are starting to do that as I say I, I'm, I'm bitter and twisted because we invested in 
a lot of really good. So we could do fantastic online stuff and then realize that everybody really wants to. And I love being li live. So, you know, that's the real thing because you interact with the audience and whatnot. So, it, it, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, it is coming back. So that that that's good. And I mean, and it is. The industry was decimated. I, I mean, there's a, a warehouse in Birmingham that's, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands of square feet that's full of amplifiers and microphones, and they hire out for the events industry. And that warehouse is usually empty, you know, because everything's out. It, they haven't had any work for two years. The whole thing's just literally like something out of Indiana Jones, this great big place full of boxes. You know, and people that do the flowers and people that do the little pens you can nick and the unprinted umbrellas and the snacks and the hotels and all of them just decimated. So, I mean, to see that coming back is, you know, for those that survived is wonderful. You know, I mean, it's the same with the theatres as well. You know, it, you know, we, we, we had a we had a dappled our foot at the Panto in Bristol, you know, and, and, and it was just nice to see people back. I'll tell you what I was going to ask you, actually, because obviously, you you know, you are a retail guru. You know, you know what you're talking about on that front. And it was this story about Primark, you know, Primark themselves um, have made absolutely billions. I think it was one point four billion. that yeah. they've made. And then and then announced this week they're going to get rid of 400 managers. And well, yeah, I mean, it's all I mean, yeah, they've probably got some consultants in somewhere that. Uh, that have told them to streamline or or agile. That's the other one, and and yeah, you know, all these bits and bobs. But uh, you know that that is always. Uh, I mean, I, I I think I writ I writ that in one of my books about the, you know, the the fact that, you know, companies that make excessive profit profit start building this glass tower with all these people. You know, sort of you know mission statement manager of mission statement implica implication, and then. When that a few years down the line, when they realise they're not making as much money they did, they can get rid of all the dead wood. And any anyone who's a fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that there, there was these people called the Golga Frinchians, who who basically apply a, a planet loaded up all their marketing people, telephone sanitizers, and PR men, and sent them off into space. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that actually. I do remember it's a long time since I've read the Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah, and I, I, you probably find that if you sit back and find that the shops actually run just as well when the manager probably a manager probably went off sick with COVID and nothing changed, and they thought, "Hello, that's forty grand a year we can save in each shop." Then, you know. So I, I mean, but beware of consultants; they sort of sweep through these these things. So the last question I've got for you, then, you, you're doing a lot of the stuff. You're all, so we say, top hits on yeah. LinkedIn. I've watched loads of the videos, by the way. Are you, <laughs> you going to do it? So the, the plan was to do more of these, these ones on LinkedIn and social media. I'm a bit useless. That's the trouble at doing it. People, I, I've got this American guru, Cash Jeff, you've got to do more on LinkedIn because people love it and it brings your profile up. And then I sort of sit in the bath thinking... I can't think of anything to say, really. I mean, I don't, but but I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn is very valuable. Uh, there's a, here's a word for all of you. This is the I love posh business words, as I say, like six sigma and agility. Disintermediation. Do we like that one? I like that. No. One. No. And it, what it what it means is is getting rid of the middleman. <laughs> and for me, my middleman was always the speaking agents. They just ring me up. You know, and all, all they did was took 20% of their mon my money. But anybody who wanted a conference would ring a speaking agent who would ring me. Now, the speaking agents, I don't know what happened to them, but they, they, they fell apart. So my problem is I've actually got to find my consumers directly. I've got, I've got to disintermediate. I mean, Amazon, I mean, it's the big thing. I mean, if, if you are in any kind of industry and you've been going down to the local builder's merchant to buy your nuts and bolts, you could go straight to the nut and bolt manufacturer. You know, in the old days, the nut and bolt manufacturer would refuse to sell to you. No, 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 we only, we only sell through our distributors. But it's starting to dawn on people that direct business and, and, and this. So being a middleman is a fairly dangerous place to be at the moment. 
I, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, cut out the middle guy. That's been happening with the manufacturers. A bit like Sony. You yeah. Know, used to have Sony shops, cut out them out, they sell directly. Anyway, Jeff, we'll have to move on. Thanks ever so much for, for that. I'm going to go over back over to Tim. Tim, um, obviously, you're a busy guy now, aren't you? This is the time of year, all the accounts come in, all the, you know, uh, have people been doing their accounts over Christmas? Are they are they in now? Uh, it, it is a busy time, yes. Um, and, yeah, quite a few tax returns and so forth remaining to be done. I think most people have uh, sent in anything that we need to get stuff finished for them. Um, government's extended the deadline uh, to the end of February albeit you've still got to pay your tax at the 31st of January, so you've still got to do your tax return to work out how much tax you've got to pay, so it's not necessarily the um, great saviour for meeting deadlines that it's, it's dressed up to be. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's that time of year, but to be honest, I think it's been quiet for, for a long time. It's, it's been flat out, and I think that, uh, not just us, I think that reflects quite a lot of uh, different businesses and sectors. It's, it's just... Manic. Now, as Randall, Randall and Payne, because you're not just really accountants, you do an awful lot of business advice, isn't it? I mean, fundamentally, the old style accountancy firm has changed, isn't it? Or you, you kind of like business gurus in your own rights as well. Yes. Um, you be a little bit careful what I say about consultancy after what Jeff has just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, we, I think with the, the changes in technology and the um, some of the accounting cloud products that are out there. Um, it, it's possible to do an awful lot more with clients now than just prepare a historic set of accounts. Um, if they're using the software properly, um, then you can almost be looking at day-to-day -day figures and then that makes it so much easier to give certain types of advice, certainly tax advice, right time to buy equipment and things like that, right time to commit to a pension contribution. So. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more to it these days than just throwing a set of accounts together to keep the inland revenue as it was, HMRC, as it is now happy. Now, the other thing I saw, actually, you did a you did a parody of, of Friends uh, video. I don't know if anyone saw that. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, and you're in the fountain, actually got into the fountain outside your office, which... Rob did, but I didn't. Oh, He's I... better now. <laughs> I was going to say, has he recovered from that? <laughs> Uh, we did have the fountain cleaned a, a few days beforehand, but having said that, it still turned a murky shade of green very quickly. Um, but uh, he volunteered, yeah. So, um, well, I tell you what, if anyone gets a chance, watch that friends video, um, Randall and Payne, not your average accountants, far more fun than that. Um, thanks ever so much for that, Tim. I'm gonna go over to George. George, um, you've got two letting agents, you started your business very young, didn't you? I did, yeah, the grand old age of 19, so yeah. From your living room or, or like the rest of us? From, yeah, no, from my mum's dining room at the time. Um, so we used to have a little coal fire and everything in the winter. It was brilliant. Um, but yeah, no, we used to have clients come and sign up in the kitchen and um, yeah, and we've grown from there really. So now we've got a branch in Cheltenham, branch in Gloucester and um, yeah, growing great guns at the moment. Can't complain. We've got a great team. So it's it's this the company's called Move, isn't it? Sales and lettings. I mean, and that's selling houses and property and yep. lettings. Uh, what's the market been like for you over this last eighteen months? Um, absolutely nuts. I mean, we haven't been. We, we we've doubled our staff <coughs> over the last eighteen months. That's how busy we've been. Um, we yeah. I mean, it's just been a little bit ridiculous at times, and uh, you know, we haven't been able to take time off. Um, we've worked all the way through. COVID, we've been in the office the whole time, um, you know, obviously following government guidelines, but we've had to work. Um, so no, it's been it's been a very interesting market, serious growth across the board. Um, you know, sales, it's a, a, a seller's market at the moment, so a vendor's market, um, you know, prices are going over asking price. Um, and on the rental side of things, there's, you know, there is a clear difference between Gloucester and Cheltenham, but there's a massive uh, supply and demand issue. In Gloucester, we have an outrageous amount of demand from tenants, um, which has pushed rents really sky high. Um, you know, so, some rents we've been, when we've been reletting properties, we're putting them up 150, 200 pounds a, a month difference. Um, and we're still having, you know, the phone will ring off the hook when a property goes live. It's, it's you know, it's, it's getting a little bit ridiculous. So we can do with some more stock over there. Um, Cheltenham, 
has probably been affected more so on the rental side of things because um, Cheltenham's a lot of what I refer to as corporate type tenants. Um, so your GCHQs, your, you know, your Spirex and, the, and that side. So um, those top end rents that would normally fly out have been struggling. But no, I mean, the market on the whole has been absolutely fantastic um, if, you, if, if you're a vendor rather than a purchaser. But it's all relative, I suppose, isn't it? If you're, if you're buying at the top and selling at the top, it's, uh, it's all relative. Now, I always like your branding. It's very pink. And you, I've seen your pink move it cars all over the place as well. Yeah. Was that was that your idea? Come up with the pink stuff? Yeah. So the pink, the pink branding. When we were sitting there, you know, designing the branding, coming up with the whole concept, it was what's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Um, obviously, EasyJet had already ruined orange, so we couldn't use orange because because uh, my my previous company before we rebranded was a bright orange company. So we thought we'd go for pink instead. And you know, it was what do you see? What what stands out most when you drive down the road? If you had our board and three of our competitors' boards, um, you'll see our bright pink sign. Um, so it was quite a simplistic um, move from us, but also. Um, generally when it comes to moving house um, the, the female um, makes the decision and, and women love pink um, and uh, yeah so it, it helps it helps draw in uh, draw in that side of attention well, let's, see, let's see how many complaints we get for that one then George yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> <laughs> you were doing really well until you wrote yourself a two corner there. Oh, no, I, I love pink as well. I'm wearing a pink shirt and um, no, it's a, it's a strong. A Don't strong waffle now, mate. Don't waffle. I love pink as well, he says. Um, <laughs> thanks so, so much. Julie, Julie, Julie. Now, you and I have known each other for a long time. Let's, I, I mean, you, you wear so many hats, but I'm not going to talk about the Pied Piper. Give us a plug about your new radio show. Well, um, of course, I will have to mention Pied Piper at some point, but um, I, have, I have been asked to start a radio show for 7FM, which is a local community radio. Uh, the actual um, radio station is over in Hardwick, but we record it and it's very like Desert Island Discs. I said, yeah, I thought about it long and hard. And I thought, OK, I'll do. I do love people. I love chatting to people. And, you know, I've got my podcast, which is a second series of 60 is the new 40. So I love to hear about that, George, that, um, you know, we're going to live to 150, which just makes 60 actually young now, which is just music <laughs> to my ears. Um, but 7FM is all about um, you choose seven records and then we talk about your life or what they mean to you in an hour show first one went out last week a friend of mine that was born in Gloucester and I grew up with and she now has got a mm -hmm. helicopter company in Las Vegas um, this week I got Nick Brody the chairman of Pied Piper and the week after I have Mark Moose which is what hey. I call him he's Mark Moose in my phone um, so do please tune in four o'clock on a Sunday every Sunday, four o'clock for um, 7FM. And actually, I have approached Jeff about coming on my podcast. And he said, once I've got my IT sorted. Oh, yes. Then, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so it, yes. Doing, oh, well, so, I'll have a bit uh, of But I can I've... see you haven't got your IT sorted yet. I have, then. look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, we'll be... We, we won't recording use the posh camera though, because it's so posh, it shows my wrinkles, not that I've got any. Um, Jeff, just... No, Jeff, the crap, the just... crap cameras are so much fl more <laughs> flattering. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, um, so yeah, please mistake. tune in. I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say, Jeff, don't make the mistake I made. Where um, we we did the hour show, and I actually only got till I was around twelve. Uh, instead of my life, yes. I was waffling so much about my younger life. Anyway, <laughs> tell us about the Pied Piper appeal, Julie. It's in its thirtieth year. I'll keep it brief. 30 years ago, Pied Piper was started. And so we have a massive um, launch. We want people to do things 30 times, drink 30 pints, whatever. We've got over 30 businesses pledged to, to raise three and a half thousand for us. We've still got some tables at our race day. We're having a race day and we're in a marquee adjacent to the race course, no queues, plenty of parking. We've got a tote, 90 pounds ahead. You can send the invoice to the company and we've got a crystal ball in May at uh, the Double Tree Hilton. So lots, please follow us on every platform going because we want to raise 400,000 this year, which for us, we'd never raise 300,000, but I'm determined to raise 400,000. So for sick and children, sick and disabled children in Gloucestershire. Tim, I've got to ask, is that okay to do that? Raise the invoice to the company? Quick one. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, move, Entertainment. Move it, move it on. <laughs> right, anyway, let's wrap this up and let's get on with uh, what's caught your eye in this week's Punchline, if that's okay. Jeff, I'm going to catch, start with you. What's the story that's caught your eye in this week's Punch? Well, I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> the online version of our magazine, mate. No. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> I'm completely aghast. 
That's okay. Don't worry at all. Well, we won't edit that out, unfortunately. I, was, I, touched, <laughs> I touched on I touched on Primark, but one of the stories that we did carry, uh, and I'll ask you about this, was Superdrive results were out. They actually uh, uh, had uh, in their in their quarter this last quarter uh, had four million pounds worth of profits, uh, of sales of eighteen point uh, eighteen point nine million. But one of the things that's really interested in that story was how many influencers. You know, internet in influencers. They've got. They've hired two thousand influencers now to wear their T-shirts to promote their products. You know, because they've gone back to their roots and gone back to aiming for a younger well, audience. That's how Julian started it, wasn't it? Because he 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 was he was a neighbour of mine. He also, I, I I believe, he came on one of my business startup courses. I wish I'd asked for a percentage. Um, but his his thing was he would just send T-shirts to celebrities, just send them, and of course I'm sure they'd polish their cars with them. Until uh, somebody like Beckham, I'm 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 just guessing, but if somebody like Beckham or somebody suddenly appeared in a super dry T-shirt, and that was it then, yeah. You know, but exactly. I mean, he was cult clothing man. No, that's um, right. That's exactly the way it, it took off. And it's funny. I was at the opening of their new Cheltenham store. Uh, and his wife Jade was there, but there were a lot of influencers there as well. Um, no, but, no, I don't know. I, do you know, I, I've got to have a wind jet. I've never asked to, you know. I mean, you know, wind, wind carnis tonic wine is the only one that's ever invited me to be an influencer. <laughs> Sanatogen. <laughs> I'm an influencer for Sanatogen, you know. But, uh, you know, why, why doesn't somebody like Rolex or somebody or... Well, they, there you go. I mean, um, I can't. I won't be talking. Mixed vapor you know. rub. <laughs> 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 right, Tim. What's caught your eye? What's caught your eye in this week's punchline, please? Uh, I, I love the story about the um, how much we all spent on Christmas presents for our pets. Um, I think it was in yesterday's. So, uh, is it Jolly's in Gloucester? Uh, obviously, done very well and. Uh, I know we always buy ours a, a present and um, it's usually got a squeak in it and it drives us all mad until he's finally shredded it within a couple of hours. And um, it, was, it was interesting, we've got a, a WhatsApp group at work and the number of uh, shares of pictures of presents going to, to dogs on Christmas day. Um, you know, yeah, I can understand now why, uh, why the pet shops did so well. They did amazingly well during lockdown. I see all these little dogs with coats on and things. Oh, I dressing think... gowns. Oh, <laughs> my sister's think... dog's got a dressing gown. I, I, I would complain, but I've got a pet slug and he's done the 75 quids with the hostas. <laughs> well, I, I was giving you a joke about pets and it being, it being barking. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> oh, George, yes. what has caught your eye? What's caught your eye this week's punchline, please, sir? So I... Um, well, obviously, anything to do with property catches my eyes. So Gloucester, Gloucester House Builder delivers on green targets. So this is about Newland Home delivering on its green targets and green credentials. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to make a comment on, in this day and age, the you know, EPCs used to be a thing that no one ever really cared about. No one paid any attention at all to the performance, energy performance of their property. Now, in this day and age, it is one of the main things that we get asked when we're doing viewings. When, when we're, people are looking at properties online, we monitor the click-through rates and people are looking at EBCs as much as they're looking at floor plans on online listings. Mm. So, um, you know, great to see house builders and great to see Gloucester firm as, you know, leading by example. But I think it's going to become more and more and more important now um, on, on properties, eco-credentials. Um, and I think small developers, so small local developers are going to really need to start putting extra money into this because it's going to, you know, it, it's going to pave the way for people's decisions on which properties they do or don't buy. Do people turn down the house if it's too high then? Or, or... They won't turn down a house necessarily, but they will then put the cost of what it's going to take to increase those green credentials into their decision making and potential offer on a property. Um, more so on the rental side of things, yes, tenants now, if you have night storage heaters, I'm talking old night storage heaters because new electric heaters are actually energy efficiency rated A, so it's actually more efficient than gas in some cases. But the old night storage heaters, yeah, tenants won't rent properties if they've got them in there. Right, very, very interesting. I might catch uh, up with you later about that, actually, for a nice story punchline today. Julie, what's caught your eye, please? Um, well, I, it, 
as my, um, you know, I retired recently, well, a year ago from Dean Close, I, what caught my eye was um, encouraging young people to become members of the youth parliament. And I remember at Dean Close, we did used to have people that um, did put themselves up for this. So young people between the 11, age of 11 and 18 can put themselves forward to be a member of the youth parliament. They will actually go to the houses of parliament. They will actually, um, you know, decide what they want to raise the attention of the MPs. So things like mental health, um, things like sustainability, and actually young people are really key. They are brilliant at sustainability, much more than older people really. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think it's great that you covered it. I mean, I'm not sure how many 11 to 18 year olds actually get punchline, but their parents mm -hmm. who know that their kids are, you know, they have aspirations of being politicians or whatever. I really encourage them all to, you know, get their kids to put themselves forward. And we, we live in a diverse um, county here in Gloucester and Chatham. And I really hope that lots of voices put themselves forward. So we get a lot of voices heard from different areas of the county, really. Okay, thanks very much. The stories that caught my eye, we talked, we touched on Superdry, we talked about Primark. The other one was actually Lansdowne Industrial Estates, 200 new homes going to be, are planned to be built there. This is part of the Chilton Spa Railway Station, along the road that's parallel along, along there. I know the estate really, really well because we deliver punchlines there. It's a bit of a shame. Let's hope that they make these houses really eco-friendly. That's gone in for uh, um, plowsing, uh, planning consult consultation. And the other one that really caught my eye was Stroud Medical Centre, the contractor that went bust this week. It's a 5.6 million pound development that's connected to the Five Valleys Shopping Centre. Uh, it's a Yorkshire-based PDR construction that went into administration. Real, real shame. Uh, one of the stories that we added to that was it was a shame they never built the thing uh, with a local contractor and uh, and very recently it was announced in the Forest of Dean, they were knocking down the uh, five acres site and that was a contractor that was uh, from uh, Birmingham based and part of our story was why, why wasn't a local contractor used? We talk about leveling up and the council have come back to us actually with a little bit of a rebuke saying that uh, no local contractors actually applied to actually uh, do the work. Anyway, and with that, thank you ever so much for joining Punchline Talks this week. It's been great to have a fantastic panel on. Please stay safe. If you like the show, please like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye.